Hail hey, beloved monsterites, when I came across this and this ensures the metabolism necessary for the life of the head. The isolated head lives on for hours and reacts to external stimuli. And the fact that this is real, I just had to make a video. I didn't know how I'd approach it exactly, but I knew I just had to make a video. Allow me to forewarn you, there's a certain creepiness in the whole topic at hand. And though I won't be presenting any real graphic footage, I'd say if you are very easily disturbed, then you may just want to listen to this video instead. Before we jump into the crazy experiments on dogs that led to the Soviet bio-robot idea, let's get a little taste of some things our mad scientists had been up to. 1660s, foundation of Boyle's Law and successful experiments proving that living things needed air to breathe. 1700s, Tests proved that electricity within the organisms caused animation. The 1800s, the continuation of vivisection, a term coined during the period for the dissection of living organisms, including humans, though much less so globally by now. 1880s, sheeps and anthrax were used to prove the theory that germs caused illnesses. This eventually led to the pasteurization of milk. 1890s, Pavlov demonstrates classical conditioning with a surgically implanted tube connected to the salivary glands of a dog to measure stimuli responses. 1901. Guinea pigs were injected with diphtheria toxin. After much sacrifice, an immunization for humans was created. 1905. After almost a century of experimentation, mostly on rabbits, the first transplant surgery on a human is performed. The tissue, the cornea, the clear covering of an eye. Far prior to these dates, animals were viewed as being more machine-like, and ethical concerns on their abuse and experimentation more so surrounded them being the property of another person rather than being a rightfully living being of its own. Keep in mind that this approach was more notable in the Greeks and possibly other nations, as many other cultures and societies develop their own different ethical understandings based on observation, spirituality, or other experimentation. Be it noted that even though this timeline had a rather negative connotation due to the nature of the context here, there have been many positive human and animal rights movements and medical discoveries throughout these times in our history. Seeing now what humans have been capable of prior and early into the 20th century, let's embark on this journey of unveiling this mystery of a living head and Soviet dogbot super soldiers. In short, keeping body parts alive or animated. 1910 through 1913, a Russian surgeon succeeds in reviving a dog killed by electric shock with an injection of a mixture of adrenaline and saline solution. 1923 to 1925, Sergei Bruhonenka, a Soviet scientist, invents the autojector, a device run by two electric pumps that through rubber tubing circulate the blood out of an organ or organism into a vessel to be citrated, heated, oxygenated, and fed back. As later seen in this video documentation of 1940, first isolated organs were tested. Isolated organs can be brought to life even though they've been removed from the animal's corpse sometime after death. The following experiment is conducted on lungs taken from an animal. Following these successes, the autojector was used to revive a dog. This is one of the animal's last gasps. The dog is dead. The autojector is being attached before starting the revival. The arterial pump is connected with the artery. The venous pump is connected with the vein. Ten minutes have elapsed since the animal died. The blood removed from the animal is pumped back into its vessels by the autojector. The artificial blood circulation 
gradually induces the heart to start beating again. The heart's action begins to be normal. The first sign. The respiration is gradually restored. The dog breathes more normally and evenly. The animal's condition approaches normal. We can now disconnect the autojector and leave the organism of the dog to maintain life with its own resources. After 10 to 12 days, the dog returns to its normal state. If such complex organs and even a dog could be restored, then what about the head alone? Following the various experiments, we arrive at the living head. Sergei had successfully animated a dog's head, proving it to be conscious enough to respond the to simple stimuli. Takes arterial blood from the reservoir to the head, while the venous pump drains off the venous blood. The blood is arterialized in the reservoir where there is a steady flow of oxygen. The artificial blood circulation ensures the metabolism necessary for the life of the head. The isolated head lives on for hours and reacts to external stimuli. The isolated head even reacts to light and to sound. Although the video claims the head living on for hours, some scientists came forth stating that to be more in the vicinity of a few minutes, which in either case was still quite amazing. Naturally, such experimentation on human organs and body parts, such as the finger, ensued. Onward we go to the introduction of Vladimir Petrovich Demikhov. Dr. Demikhov, who passed away in 1998, was yet another Soviet scientist and the orchestrator of what was to become the two-headed dog. In 1937, he created the world's first artificial heart and successfully implanted it into a dog, just three years after he began studying at the Voronezh State University. Here are just two more of his notable first-ever successes. In 1946, he transplanted the heart and lungs of a dog as a single graft. In 1951, he performed an orthotopic or correctly positioned heart transplantation in a dog. And then, in 1954, using vascular connections to the host's heart, he transplanted not just another dog's head, but uppermost portion of the torso onto another dog. Не забывая о сердце, Демихов поднимается на новую ступень трансплантологии. В 1954 году он вновь заглядывает в будущее. Ему удается сделать двуголовую собаку. На тело большого пса пришивается голова и часть туловища маленькой собачки. Очевидцы утверждают, что у каждой головы после операции сохранялся свой прежний характер. Большой ласковый пес никак не мог повлиять на новую часть своего тела. Маленькое кусачее животное продолжало рение. Например, коллеги доктора Демихова обратили внимание, что на пересаженной голове старой собаки потускневшая шея происходила из-за того, что старая голова теперь полноценно функционировала на молодой собаке и длился в среднем около месяца. Подопытные животные часто гибли, потому что основное тело во сне могло перевернуться и невзначай придавить пришитую голову. He performed this experiment many more times with the unfortunate outcome of all dogs dying within a month of the implantation. Eventually, news of these monster dogs hit the world, shocking the public on levels of both ethics and amazement. Scientists from all over the world came to see the creations of Demikhovs and to observe and study other Russian medical procedures. And so finally, this leads us to these images found in related posts. The Soviet super soldier bio-robot. The sketches and documentation looked so real. I was immediately intrigued. This had to be genuine. But it was so weird. It looked as if something out of an old sci-fi movie or possibly like something that inspired those movies. So is this cybernetic canine concept a true Soviet conception of the past? 
Upon digging through various websites and posts, I eventually came to this conclusion. Unfortunately, no. Now I say unfortunately, as I do understand how horrendous these tests would be for the animals. But just imagine how strange and fascinating it would be to see something like this actually be taken seriously. These images and designs being an attempt at making a possible conception were good, meaning they were much less obvious at being fake than the actual conception. The notion starting at organ transplants to head transplantation and then to successfully sinking biology and machine, or even thinking of doing so in the early 1900s, should have certainly raised red flags. For even a humanoid, mobile, functional robot at this time would have been something incredible. It wasn't until 1993 that Honda first came out with a humanoid robot. The technology and knowledge wasn't even close at the point these images suggest. Not to mention, what would even be the point of having a dog's head operating a humanoid robot. Demikhov's two-headed dogs were already a topic largely criticized for its lack of necessary purpose. I don't think there were many parents who would want the kids sticking out of there. Although the experiments still offered lots of relatable medical knowledge, but this, this is just too far-fetched. The collie, as named after the collie breed of dog shown to be used in this false military plan, was actually a digital design project of Dima Isotop. You can follow this link to see it presented best. While you can even see what the Kalibot has been up to lately. All in all, great design work there, Dima. From the sketches to the digital sculpt of the robot itself, to the internet playing along in the ambiguity of this creation. Finally, what have we learned? Various traumatic experimentations have taken place far before those mentioned here since at least 500 BC on both living animals and humans, or should I say organisms, as it is largely this separation of us and these creatures we share our planet with that has placed and continues to place them in beneficial harm's way. It's easy to point fingers and say that some of these scientists mentioned earlier are evil, bad, wrong, unethical. But the past is past, and all we can do is prepare a better future. And thankfully, due to many of these mad scientists, countless lives have been saved. Many of them laid the groundwork for further positive advancement. And sure, others failed. Could we have eventually figured out organ transplantation, blood transfusions, and other complicated medical procedures without working on animals or other people? I believe so eventually. There's always more ways to get something done, as you learn the more you work with, say, design software. But if humanity had taken a different route, how many other unethical factors would have risen? How many lives of loved ones would have passed away because of heart or lung problems? I ask you, Cyber Explorer, were these scientists mad? Were they monsters? Do you think there are stitched up Project Beasts somewhere hidden within the top secret facilities of our human world? Do you believe such experimentation has stopped? Do you believe experimentation on animals will be necessary for the future advancement of technology? How about in the medical field? Will it become more relevant to experiment on humans alone in order to battle the problems we as a unique species face? Please, do share. Thank you for supporting World of Monsters, Everything Monster, as yes, we cover all mythical creatures from times old to modern fiction. I'm Monster Master Arthur, and I'll see you in the next one.